at she can we tell women's stories we talk to women and show how they got to where they are today and i'm really excited to talk to katie friend today katie you are also a friend or a friend of a friend and so that's how we met for the first time and i'm really excited that we can finally got, get it together to chat to you and also hear your story you're an english and french speaking sports commentator presenter adventurer presentation coach and podcaster based in switzerland you host the podcast Chatting to a Friend that you've done something like 55 episodes. Um, you interview extraordinary women about their lives, their adventures, their challenges, their grief, their motherhood, their childnesses, anything that sort of comes in is part of that journey. Tell us a bit more about yourself. Oh, a bit more about me. Well, I am, thank you for a very lovely introduction. I am Scottish. I am now very proudly into my 50s. And I'm the mother of two teenagers, which is uh, a, certainly a new challenge in the mothering uh, department, shall we say. And uh, I've lived in Switzerland for full time, nearly 15 years. Katie, so tell us a little bit more about what you do you you you're you're married to someone who is really adventurous you always so you, you're in switzerland in verbier in the mountains you're surrounded by sport you you made this your job you're commenting you're it's it's really part of your life to be embroiled in this adventure gang if i can say that tell us a bit more about that life yeah well it's a it's a funny life for somebody who absolutely hated sport with a passion growing up I was always the last to be picked on every team I hated running I didn't like being sweaty I knew how to ride a horse and ski um two fairly I suppose privileged uh sports um but that's really all I knew how to do and and I married this as you say an exceptionally sporty man who has uh, achieved some incredible things and I just got to the stage where um I felt like, if you will, if you can't beat them, join them. And as you know, in this part of the world, there are so many amazing, amazing role models from, I mean, you can't move without falling over a, a world champion or a, you know, a former free ride, you know, ski goddess, um, right down to, you know, just mums getting out, making time for themselves just to keep fit, keep their brains from exploding. And I just... Uh, I kind of felt like there was there were enough levels for me to uh, you know get into it without being completely overwhelmed by my husband's extraordinary sporting feats. Katie, so what is it like to live next to someone who is so unbelievably driven uh, and be and 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 really being part of a support team, but also making it your job? And uh, what is that like? Well, it's a game of two halves, as they say. Um, I spent a lot of time. It's exhausting, quite frankly, quite a lot of the time. <laughs> it is all the good things. It's inspiring. It is empowering. It, it opens your eyes to all the things that are possible when you put your mind to something. It's really, you know, it's quite extraordinary. And to see how that influences our children and and how they can be uh, you know they are interested in so many different things because of that but it it very for much of the beginning of our relationship was exhausting for me because I didn't grow up like that I didn't um, I wasn't somebody who understood about single-mindedness and determination in that necessarily to that certainly not to that extent and so I find it very difficult to you know be a new wife a new mum a newly arrived in Switzerland and be able to support the sort of extreme adventures if you like of my husband I am very much more well versed in the subject now and uh, mostly all the good things are you know all I take from it but it took some getting used to for me that is for sure Katie so what is your main motivator when did you define your role within all of that Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, well, when the children were small, I realized very quickly that if I did not 
start doing something that I would be the mummy sitting on the sofa hearing about all the adventures mm -hmm. and I didn't I really 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 didn't want that yeah. for me for my children you know I have a son and a daughter and I think it's equally important that they see uh you know an active I mean I've always been active but I just wasn't sporty and I felt like it was really important for both of them to see a woman taking sport and exercise and well-being seriously and also I just didn't want to be left out quite frankly yeah <laughs> so Katie so how did you how did you get to it and thought I'm very good at being a part of it I'm very good at the um you know the coaching and the commenting and actually I can this is a purpose and I can do that for other people well, actually, funny enough, when I moved to Switzerland, I wasn't a commentator. I wasn't a speaker coach. I wasn't any, any of the things that I am now. This has been, quite frankly, the land of opportunity for me, and not least because of the exhausting adventures of my husband. But actually, the sport and the commentating kind of arrived hand in hand for me. The, the biggest thing for me was that I had always wanted to be a radio presenter since I was a little girl and when a local uh the locals tourist radio started up I basically knocked on the door I had a tiny baby and a toddler and I said how can I be part of this how can I be on the radio how can I be involved and I spent three years with them and that is how I got into commentating because the ski mountaineering world cup came to Verbier they needed someone who spoke French and English to do the race announcing and that's how that came about. So they, they came hand in hand and the presentations coaching came because eventually it turns out that because I had been on the radio, I had been commentating, I had been sports and uh, race announcing and all the things. I just, I was getting better and better at it without actually really knowing. <laughs> and um, my husband had a couple of clients and he said, you know what? I don't know why I'm pitching other people to do this I think you should come and do this with me and that's how that started how lovely is that <laughs> Katie so what do you feel your top qualities are what what are the things that really serve you with with your roles and your purpose now well my roles are many apart from the sort of what they call these days a portfolio career I'm also still a fairly actively involved mum we have a very busy life. And so I, I I feel like I've found a balance between working part-time freelance and still managing all the rest of it. And in terms of sort of hard skills, if you like, my qualities are I'm ridiculously well organized. Um, I can see a calendar a year in advance, if not more, what's happening, how it's going, who's going where, who's doing what. Um, I like logistics. I used to be in event management. So that sort of is something that I learned a lot from there. And it helps me to manage all the different aspects of our life and my career and the kids and so on. In terms of softer stuff, um, I have always, always, always loved talking to people. In fact, I've always loved talking. And it's one of my biggest uh wins in life I guess you could say is that when I was a little girl if you read any of my um reports from school they all said if Katie would stop talking and concentrate um Katie could do better if she stopped talking mm -hmm. and it is the greatest achievement of my life that I now make my living from doing the thing that I was always told to stop doing <laughs> I just I just found a way of using the thing that I've always loved and been good at uh, for good yeah that's great that you said that <laughs> katie so i'm wondering what are the sort of challenges for you on a day-to-day -day basis oh well that's really hard to say because my day-to-day -day is different all the time i mean it's one of the it's a it's an advantage because life is never boring mm. it's a disadvantage because i'm somebody who could probably do with a little bit more routine in my life I'm not very good at making it for myself, but I've had to learn. Um, so I would say those probably my I don't know if I could say day to day, but sort of generally speaking, my challenges are I am either 
far too busy with about 70 bazillion projects on the go and spinning plates like crazy and thinking, ah, or I'm like I am right now, recovering from a knee replacement, thinking I've got things to do, but nothing <laughs> urgent. And the sun is finally shining. And maybe I'll just, so I, I would say probably for me, the biggest challenge is a lack of consistency, but actually I found a way of making that work for me. I now, I I appreciate and I'm grateful when I'm busy and buzzing and all the dopamine is firing. I also now really appreciate some quiet time at home just and, and, and allow myself to have the downtime. So I think I like to, think I've made my challenge into an advantage I think mostly <laughs> you did Katie so you have been running chatting to a friend for a while I mean you've spoken uh -huh. to 55 women or had 55 episodes and spoke to even more women tell us a little bit more about that experience and give us some tips for our listeners what are your takeaways from having spoken to so many incredibly adventurous and incredibly accomplished and super cool women well um it actually makes me quite emotional when i think about it because you know you must know what it's like to have the opportunity to have somebody that you really want to talk to and you might never ever get that time to have them 20 minutes, an hour, whatever it might be, just to yourself, just with no real agenda, just to pick their brains, to, <clears throat> excuse me, hear what makes them tick, to just know about them. I mean, for me, the privilege is extraordinary. I mean, I've talked to, you know, the human space flight um, controller for the UK. I've spoken to the winner of the marathon, the Saab, the first woman to sail solo around the world, you know, a sports lawyer who's negotiating deals for Usain Bolt, mums who have rowed oceans. And I just, what I got out of it and what I have tried to take from that into my daily life is just, I always say it was like a masterclass in life for me. And I, I I know it sounds a bit pretentious, but it was it's absolutely true because every single time I would come off an episode, I would think, wow, wow, that's, that's extraordinary. Like I, 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 there's something I didn't know, or there's somebody who I think is, you know, absolutely killing it in all the things. And they struggled with, you know, menopause or not having kids or, depression or leaving their marriage nearly uh, nearly 60 I'm not saying that you know I'm happy they all had these terrible things or things that weren't great in their lives but it just shows you that and it's a bit cliched these days but you don't know what anybody's going through yeah. you just don't and no matter how extraordinary or otherwise people are there's always something you can find at a in common and B um, to inspire you in your own life. Yeah, I think, I, I'm so happy you said that because that's exactly my feeling. It's when you are communing, however long that time is, and often it's short, but it's an, an unbelievable um, insight and privilege into someone else's life that makes us understand our own humanity, right? By witnessing somebody else, we're also witnessing ourselves. And I think that is such a powerful thing. So Katie, who, what do you think, what are you most proud of to date? Oof. Um, what am I most proud of? Well, it's kind of maybe not what you're expecting. It's not an actual achievement, although I'm very proud of the fact that I went from not sporty to doing some pretty gnarly sporty things. Learning, I learned all my sports in my 40s. I'm pretty proud of that. I'm extremely proud of my children. Obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but I am. Um, but I would say probably I'm most proud of the last five years because about five years ago I had a massive burnout like a proper full-on full-on burnout and I was at rock bottom and I think it's a lot of things turns out I was subsequently diagnosed with ADHD didn't know I had that 
um, perimenopause, all the things. And where what I found from that was a much clearer sense of who I am and what I like to do and what I will tolerate in life and what makes me happy. And I have a much calmer and easier time with myself, with the people around me. And it is probably the thing I'm most proud of okay. because I worked I worked really hard at that. I I didn't, it didn't come easily. I had to challenge a lot of my own beliefs, a lot of my long held beliefs about myself. And, and, and so uh, it's still a work in progress, but I'm very proud of that. It's always a work in progress, but once one looks at it like that, it, 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 it just puts everything in perspective and makes this journey, uh, exciting and full of the good stuff and so i'm so grateful you said that katie because i feel that especially lately so many women i speak to have had a burnout and they all had to find a way to find back to themselves and then to re jiggy anything that needed rejigging and then continue on to their path and so often it was even more full of purpose and you know full of life and really knowing what they were here for and 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 living that life so how did you when you were at rock bottom what was the thing that got you back on your feet so that you could forge your path forwards um it wasn't one thing i mean when i think about it i feel like um, well, it was one thing, but there was a few things that came to the one thing. Mm. I got a lot of help. I asked for help. I finally asked for help, which was huge. And when I got help, it were it was a lot of women. I don't know whether on purpose or coincidentally, but my doctor was a woman. Mm. I have a, a nutritionist who was a woman, um, uh, uh, an executive function coach, also a woman, amongst other people and my female friends. And they all helped they all helped enormously more than I can ever repay them for. Mm. But I think the one thing I it was almost like a knock to the head. I thought I can take all the advice in the world, but if I do not get off my own backside and put this in action and do something with it, they can't do it for me. And I know, I really realize how a bit cheesy that sounds, but it was literally like a sunbeam through the clouds. I went, okay, you've just got to get stuck in here and do this, like make your, deal with all the uncomfortable nonsense that's going on in your head and all the hard stuff and just get out the other side. So, yeah, I'm so great. <laughs> you said that Katie because I feel that we just don't know anymore how to sit with the uncomfortable and we we, mm. we always try and push it down and by pushing it down we're not feeling it and therefore we can't process it and then the mountain gets too big at one point and then we need to sit there and dig and get it all out and sort of sort through all of that and mm. that's definitely my experience yeah Katie, so what are your plans and goals are you what about chatting with a friend what are what is going on for you for the next years is there a plan that doesn't need to be one. well there's a, there is a it's not a you know it's i'm i've never been one to i should probably maybe should you know one to, we we're always told we should have a five-year plan and a what's it plan i think um in terms of personally you know, as I said, I have two teens in their mid-teens now. Um, GCSEs have just finished yesterday. Hooray for one of them. Um, but the next couple of years are going to, I need to really be sure that I am fully there for them. And, you know, it's a critical age and stage. And I want to be doing as much as, as I can with them and helping them. Um, and for myself personally just carrying on the journey we were talking about keeping going keeping chipping away at the things that I go hmm, I wonder what that means um but and professionally well chatting to a friend has been on hold 
but um I've got this sort of burning it's not burning yet it's maybe a little tinder spark at the moment to just get back into it and um, we'll see but really excitingly I've got some amazing uh, gigs coming up work-wise um, the Winter Olympics are coming up 2026 ski mountaineering which is my main sport is the newest Winter Olympic sport so fingers crossed um, they need uh, the world's only English-speaking ski, ski mountaineer commentator <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they might, but you know, um, and with that, and what's so lovely is over the last few years, I've sort of narrowed down the things that I do within my um, speaking roles, if you like, I do less race announcing, I do more live streaming, I do more interviewing uh, for big, big clients, so sort of 10 day long um, races uh, where they, you know, just they've got live streaming going. And so I've got a lovely set of clients now who sort of just say at the end of every event, right, well, we'll see you next year. And so just gathering a few of those, which allows me to balance out this very privileged life I have of being able to work sometimes and not work other times. So more of the same, more exciting projects um, and um, hopefully building up my public speaking coaching because, and specifically for women, because I have over the last few years discovered it's actually quite a different thing um coaching women than um just coaching generally um there's a lot that I feel like I can add now mentally to that um than just how to stand up and make the words come out right <laughs> Katie in theory this would have been my last question but now that you are saying what you just said how is it different why, why does it feel different and how is it different for you as a coach, coaching a man or a woman? Well, it's funny because I would never really have said that different when I was coaching mixed groups. Mm. I never really, I mean, you can often see that women sometimes a little bit more reticent to come forward, but that's not always the case. Some men are like that too. But recently, I have been given the opportunity uh, to coach all women in a in a for a client, mm -hmm. and you know these women are extraordinary, in like world champions and you know uh, extraordinary achievers, business women with huge companies, at you know across the board, and so many of them are just in need of someone to sing again it's a cliche these days but you can take up the space you can be there you don't need to worry about being loud or being opinionated or being funny or being good at this being better at this than anybody else you know and you know many of them were amazing speakers when I got to them already and actually, it was just that sort of, there's always more you can do to, to be better at public speaking. But it was, it, it just sort of, it started to become a pattern. I was seeing that these women, oh, I'm sorry, I'm the, you don't need to be sorry. You just need to be proud of what you know and that you know it better than everybody else. That's great. Um, and so I, I'm sort of trying to tap into a little bit more of that because it's horrible. I hate it. I hate that these amazing women are still, there's this tiny part of them, some yeah. tiny or big depends on where they are in their career and their evolution. But I hate that there's so many of them still going, sorry, I hope you don't mind. I hope I was okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh I made a mistake. And oh, and, and I think I've been there. I know exactly. And I have to fight really hard, even myself, to not do that, to allow myself to take up that space, to not be... Katie should talk as much and concentrate more you know I don't you know yeah just take up the space have an opinion and don't be embarrassed I think this is a perfect finish Katie thank you so much I love how we finished because this was such an inspiring conversation because you put all that um, experience coaching people uh, commenting your podcast into into this last bit so i'm so grateful for this conversation thank you so much thank you for having me what a pleasure <laughs>